and that's what's called conventional current. Now it's a sort of a nonsensical term, there's no current flowing in that direction at all, the electrons are going the other way. The reason it's important is later on we'll come on to things called diodes. It's a semiconductor device made most commonly out of silicon with a symbol like that. And the arrow, a diode is a device that will only let current pass from one very useful thing, let current pass uh, and I don't think we're getting ahead of ourselves using the diode as an example at this stage. It's just to illustrate this term. A diode will allow current to flow one way and not the other, hence the arrow. But that arrow is pointing in the direction of conventional current flow. So it actually allows electrons to go back that way there. That's the path of the electrons through there. But the arrow is pointing opposite the way electrons are going just because of that sort of ancient um, carryover that we're stuck with. So we'll often talk actually current going out of the plus terminal round to the minus, but really the electrons are going the other direction. It is a little bit confusing and uh, I'm sorry I can't really help you with that. <laughs> something you have to keep in the back of your mind, along with all the other things. So we'll just do one last quick experiment with Ohm's Law, uh, not using a light bulb. Alrighty, so instead of using the light bulb, yep, light bulb's still there, hasn't gone bang. It's going very brightly, I wonder if it is designed to run off 10 volts, but anyway, it survived so far. Two resistors connected together, but we'll um, fix that. So we've got a, this is a particular type of resistor. When we come on to resistance proper, we'll talk about um, different kinds of resistors and things. This is sort of a small scale power resistor. It's a resistor that can handle uh, quite a lot of power. It can get quite warm and it's got a little aluminium casing around it. It can bolt to something to get rid of the heat. We'll cover, cover power a bit later on. Um, resistors can be quite impressive. I just happened to have this here and I thought I'd show you on the subject. David Rothwell, ZL2 WDR, made this up. These are some rather big resistors that are handy to put across power supplies when you want to suck about 20 or 30 amps out of a, uh, a 12 volt supply and make sure the thing's going to cope under the load or not sag. Right, it gets quite hot. <laughs> and it's not a bit grubby too, it's covered in cobwebs, it's been in my garage. Right. No lights this time, there's nothing exciting, but we can see the, the meter move over here. So this particular resistor, when it's 10 volts across it, is causing a current to flow in the circuit of 250 milliamps. 250 milliamps. Right, we'll go back to the whiteboard. Here we go. Quite convenient, the whiteboard um, fits into the shape of a TV picture. Battery, we'll go through this one quite quickly. Meter, resistance, that uh, anodized yellowish colored thing. Uh, what did we say? 250 milliamps or 0.25 an amp, 10 volts. Uh, what's the resistance there? Uh, v, I times R, the triangular thing, very useful this. We want to know um, R, R is equal to, to V over I, which is equal to 10 over 0.25, which is the same as 100 over 2.5 or um, 1,000 over 25, so 25 goes into 1,000 40 times. 40 ohms. Easy just to use a calculator. Once again, I forgot to bring it with me. <laughs> but um, 40 ohms. And ho oh, oh, hey look, we didn't actually need to, uh, to measure it because it's actually written on the side. And if I look on the side of this, it's got uh, 25W, that's 25 watts, that's how much power this resistor can cope with, and we'll come on to that under power calculations. And just above that, you have to trust me on this, you might better see it from here, is 40 ohms, 40 ohms. So we actually just worked it out using Ohm's law. Once again, we could go through the calculations again and work out uh, what voltage would have caused that current to flow through. Now, I think we, we did that well enough before. Right. I'm going to stop there and then we'll um, carry on with some uh, resistance stuff and a few more Ohm's Law calculations when we get together with it the next class in a week. Uh, that's my catch up now. The microphone's worked and I managed to capture all of that. Last week we talked about Ohm's Law. 
Yes, and you've read about, you've seen it on the yeah. DVD, that's cool. Do you remember that little um, triangle? Yep. Yeah. Which is quite handy, isn't it? And Ohm's law is all about um, uh, the relationship between current and a circuit, flowing in a circuit, resistance, and the amount of voltage you apply to it. So if you've got, a, say, a, a 12 volt battery, a uh, 2 ohm resistor, and you can work out how much current is going to be flowing. Okay, we want to know I or amps. Okay, so what do we do? We want to know this one. Okay, so I is equal to V divided by R. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 12, keep the numbers simple. <laughs> What's 12 divided by 2? 6. Cause 6 amps, doesn't it? So that's that's the phone floor. And if we um, know, know, say, resistance and voltage and not current, we can just reuse that, that triangle and so on to work things out. Um, what we need to talk about now is what happens if you have different combinations of resistors in a circuit. And um, what we're talking about here is resistors in series and parallel. So just talk about resistors in series first, which are really the, um, the easiest ones to get a handle on. If we um, have a, a 12 volt battery, what if we have a, um, a 4 ohm resistor and say a 2 ohm resistor there? Now, what, we, what our drawing here shows is showing the lines connecting up the, the resistors, okay? Here's one resistor, here's another resistor, there's a conductor in between them. So you can see that the current has to flow through the first one and then through the second one. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. The series means sort of one after the other. So it's like it's 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 uh, the, the current has a harder job to get through than one on its own, and the total resistance is we just add the two together. It's dead simple. Okay, so for resistors in series, if we call that say resistor one R1, resistor R2, and we want to know what the total resistance is, we could call it R total. Total equals R1 plus R2, and maybe if we've got three, you know, just keep on adding them up if there's a whole lot of them in series. So that equals uh, 4 plus 2 equals 6, six times. <laughs> Dead simple, isn't it? Resistors in series are nice and easy, you just add them up. And um, what, what we could we can, what we can do is we can work out what the, uh, the total current is through that circuit. Get our triangle back. Um, v equals I, I, I. So we want to know I, don't we? I is equal to V over R. So 12 over. If I make a mistake on the whiteboard, let me know. It's very easy to do. Which is what? Two amps? Two. That's what that's the current that's flying in that circuit. Oh, here comes the study of the question bank. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ben. We could use these when we come on to talk, talk about um, it's quite handy to just go through some of the questions in here. What, what we can do now is just do a few more calculations just to get an idea what the voltage is across each resistor. You can see that the, the total voltage applied to the circuit here is 12 volts, isn't it? Okay. But sometimes it can be useful to know, well, I wonder what the voltage is across that resistor, or well, the voltage across that resistor is there, okay? And I wonder what, question mark, the voltage across R1, let's just say VR1, what is it across there? So we know the current flying in the circuit, don't we? How many amps? Two amps? There's two amps flying through that resistor. We, and um, we know how much, how many ohms a resistor is. I wonder what the, the voltage across that resistor is. is can you, you can see we can use Ohm's law to do that, okay? We want to know... V, uh, where's my, my dust fell apart. It always does this thing, two amps flowing through it. V is equal to what? <laughs> I times. I times that. Yep, that's it. That it's nice to get feedback. <laughs> V equals I, don't, don't be afraid, V equals I times R, which is, okay, 2 times 4, which is 8 volts. So if we actually got a voltmeter which we can measure and just put the leads across there, 
we would get 8 volts across that resistor. Right. Now why don't we work out what the voltage is across this one. There's two ways we can work this one out. I'll show you the, uh, the hard way first. Okay. So this is the voltage across R1. Now R2, V is equal to... What is it? I, R. I times R, yep. From that triangle. Which is equal to uh, 2 amps times 2 ohms equals... 4. 4 volts. Now that was the hard way of doing it. <laughs> the easy way of doing it is, well, we, we know there's 12 volts across all these resistors together. We know that it's 8 volts across that one. So the amount left across this one must be 12 minus 8, which is 4. All the voltages around the resistors in a circuit have to add up to the total. If we've done the calculation with this one first, 4 volts, we've got to go, oh well, there's only one res resistor left. 12 minus 8 is 4. So just showing you that when you've got a a circuit with um, resistors in series, you've got the same current going through each resistor, because it's has to go through the first one, then through the second one, but the voltages across them add up to the total. So we can just do several ways to work it out. So resistors in series, dead easy. It's the same current flowing through both of them. Um, if the resistors were the same, let's say they were both 4 ohms, we'll just quickly do that one. Uh, we'll make it 3 ohms, we'll keep the math simple. <laughs> okay. Twelve volt battery, three ohm resistor, three ohm resistor, that's R1, R2. <coughs> so what's the total? R total equals R1. If it was a third resistor down here, you might R3. Equals three plus three. Six. Yeah. I've got to keep the maths easy so I don't have to reach my calculator. <laughs> Six ohms total. I mean that, that's pretty pretty straightforward, isn't it? So once again we'll just race through this one reasonably quickly. There's 12 volts across the lot. So what's the current flowing in the circuit? I is equal to V over R from our triangle, which I've rubbed out. Okay, which is uh, 12 divided by, what did we say the total was? Six. six. Equals 2 amps. 2 divided by 6. You know that something over something is the same as being divided by, okay? When you say, do you know, you know what I mean there? Yeah, 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 okay, it's cool. It's important I say this too, because some of the people watching this might be that flash on their maths. Either they, they might have left school years and years ago, or, uh, you know, they need a bit of a reminder about it. So, um, and yet, you know, you find people, uh, retired people, they might have left quite early. They might have left school even before they were 15. Um, two amps flying in that circuit. Okay, we'll put the triangle back there. We should have it here all the time. Uh, uh, let's just work out what the voltage across this one here is. So voltage across R1 is... Uh, you know, you find it here? Ah, uh, yep. You're looking for a phone? Yeah. Yep, there's one in the corner there. You can probably some of them real fine. So, uh, I equals equal to... What's that, Joshua? You be quiet. I'm going to hear this one. Yeah, I seem to be over R. Which is equal to 12 divided by... We just worked it out, didn't it? Uh, hang on. No, we don't. Sorry. <laughs> Got sidetracked. <laughs> what do we work out? We want to work out what V is equal. So, V is equal to... I times R. Yeah, you got it. <coughs> which is equal to 2 times 3, 6 volts. The other resistor is the same, we don't have to do the calculation for that. Why not? So it's 3 volts across that one there. The other one is going to be 2 times 3, 3 volts across there. Hang on, I've just done something wrong there. B is equal to I times uh, 6 volts. Ah, oh, 6 volts, sorry. This one worked out, sorry for that. I hadn't even noticed. <laughs> yeah. Six volts. Six volts, both of them add up to 12, don't they? You can see that when the um, resistors are the same like that, when you've got a circuit that have got two resistors that are exactly the same across the battery, you, you know without even calculating it that the voltage at this point here, there's going to be, the voltage across that resistor will be half, and that one there, they'll be the same, and they'll be half that because the resistors are the same value. So 
you can just do it without doing any calculations. You know that it's going to be half the total voltage across each one because they're both the same. When they're different, it's not the same. You have to do that to do the calculation. So that's resistors in series. Righty ho. Resistors in parallel. This gets a little bit trickier. Okay, that was resistors in series. Now, yeah, I can never spell it right. Uh, someone call out resistors in parallel. Uh, the two L's, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I just yeah. wrote it with two R's instead of two L's. Is that it? I don't know. Two, yeah. two L's. Two, yeah, that's what I know. Thank you. <laughs> resistors in parallel. <laughs> now, what, what it was, series was one after the other. Parallel was if we were about to say a battery. And that's when they're side by side, they're connected across each other and across the battery. Okay. So what we can say now is there's the same voltage connected across each one. So the voltage across that will be 12. And that one should be 12 because they're both connected back to the same supply. They're tied together. So it's the same voltage across each for each one, but the current's going to be different depending upon what their resistance is. There's 12 watts across that one, 12 watts across that one. So let's put some... Let's put some, um, uh, some values, we'll call that say 6 ohms, 3 ohms. The current through this one, I is equal to V over R, isn't it? What's that? 12 divided by 6, which is 2, two amps. Yep. The voltage um, across that one is 12, I is equal to V over R. Four. What's 12 divided by 3? That's 4, isn't it? 4 amps. Now, um, that total current has to come from the battery, doesn't it? This is another important point when you've got resistors in parallel. The total current flowing through the circuit is you add them up, okay? Remember before the series, we're adding the voltages up, this time we're adding the currents up. So what's 2 plus 4? 6. 6 amps. <coughs> it's flowing in that circuit there. Now, what's, what's the... We can work out... Let's just pretend... That was just one resistor there. Say it's in a box, there's two resistors connected parallel, and we don't actually know what they are. We could work out what the... We can, we can work out what the total resistance is inside that box by just by... Now we know the current flowing into the box. We know the voltage applied across it. <laughs> let's think of that. So let's try and work out what's the resistance of these two together. R is equal to... V over R. V over R. <laughs> Which is equal to 12 over 6 which is equal to, what's 12 divided by 6? 2. 2, yeah. 2 ohms. So a 6 ohm <coughs> resistor and a 3 ohm resistor in parallel um, looks like um, 2 ohms, doesn't it? Can you see we've just done that calculation there? We've got um, 4 ohms flowing in that, 4 amps flowing in that one, 2 amps flowing in that one, okay, and add them out, 6 amps, so we could pretend what if those resistors were just combined and we couldn't see them. We know the six amps flowing in the, in the, in the circuit, say so if we put a meter in there and measured it. Um, the total resistance looks like two ohms. Is there another way we can work it out? Well, there is. You know how we had a, um, a formula for working out resistors in series, which is just R total equals R1 plus R2 and so on. For resistors in parallel, we'll just draw it out. Which we applied, it is R1. R2, and there's a formula for it which is 1 over R total, okay, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, and if you've got another resistor R3, it's plus 1 over R4 and so on, up to how many you've got in parallel. So, so this is involving reciprocals and it dividing into 1. Uh, now what did we what did we say earlier before? We brought them out, weren't we? They were uh, was it six ohms and three. Three ohms, wasn't it? And three ohms, thank you. 
So 1 over our total is equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. It's supposed to be plus, not um. Now if we wanted to work this out, there's two ways we can do it. We can either get a calculator and put 6 and push the reciprocal button, you know, and you'll, you know, 1, one divided by 6, and you'll get the answer. Um, so I'll do that one in a minute, because you can get the calculator. The other one is the lowest common denominator. Now for the exam you don't have to go into maths for this. They use easy answers, you know, and there's a question, which I'll give a question back later, I'll show you what it's all about. Is so one over RT. Now if we want to add sixes and thirds, we've got to convert them to the uh, common denominator, which is sixes, isn't it? Yep. One right. over six plus one third is equal to two six. Yep. Which is equal to three six, isn't it? Okay. So one over our total is equal to three six. Okay. So now to get um, our total, we've got to tip, tip them back up the other way. So our total is equal to over one is equal to six over three. What six divided by three? Two. two ohms. That was a number we worked out before, just by going through and working out the currents through both, adding them together to get that reapplying ohms law and, and working it out. But we can do it this way. What if you're no good at doing lowest common denominators? If the numbers are quite tricky, which they are sometimes in real electricity, you might have 2,700 ohms in parallel with 5,600 ohms or something like that when you're using commercial resistors. Um, the common denominator gets a bit tricky with numbers like that. Trusty friends. <laughs> so, uh, so six. Um, rule number one: get familiar with the calculator. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. One divided by six equals. Now we get recurring numbers. You can get messy. Point one six recurring. Plus, what's one third? That's going to be point three, isn't it? Yeah, isn't point it? Three, 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 three. Yeah. Point three recurring. Yes. Yeah. 0.333, say 0.166. So 0.333 plus 0.166 equals 0.5. Okay. Just half. Um, okay. And then that's 1 over RT equals uh, 0.5. So to get the answer, we divide, we divide the answer into 1. 1 divided by 0.5 equals 2. Now that's all outlined. What page on the book there? On the basic radio training manual on page 7. goes into maths here as well. So there you are. Resistors and um, material gets a bit more interesting to get further along. Now, the question bank, you probably had a look at that there. It does refer to it in there. Um, the exam's made up of questions out of the question bank. Um, Joshua, Joshua Mack. <laughs> Separate you two out from... What they do is they see this here. There's 600 questions in here. When the exam is made up, it's randomly selected by a computer. One of the jokers in town works it out. It does it automatically. And they take like two questions out of that group there. One question out of this one here. Okay. If you go to that website, you've got to print it out. This question bank, I all right. Think, I think Mac has given me oh, I see, one got of it. the question banks. Yeah, that's all the fine. Answers are highlighted. Yeah, it shows you the answer is A and so on. Oh. So there you go. Right. You just need to memorise them. Yeah, yeah, you can do that way. Hundred questions. Well, some people can if you if you've got a good memory. You all right? Look, I'll just just um. Take a long time though. Yeah, just get back into it now. Just um. Go through some of these questions here. Um, one way to operate a three volt bulb from a nine volt supply is to connect it in A, series with the supply. So say we've got a, um, uh, what is it, a three volt, we've got a nine volt battery and a three volt light bulb. Now, we could, um, they say, what about in parallel? Okay, we can do that, put a resistor in parallel. What's the, um, the light bulb is effectively a resistance, okay? It's like another resistor. 
here's our resistor in parallel with the light bulb. What's the voltage across our 3 volt bulb in this circuit? You see how it's wired up? It's um, connected directly across to the battery, isn't it? So the voltage across that 3 volt is 9 volts. So the bulb's going to go for a few seconds. <laughs> It'll be really bright and white, and then it will fail. So uh, no, that's not the, obviously the right answer. Um, remember if you put a resistor in series, that the voltages around the circuit add up, so the voltage across that will add up with that. So if we get our resistor, we won't work it out because we'd have to know a few things about the bulb, like its resistance. We could work it out from what we've learned so far. So the answer for that one is that um, if you want to hook a 3 volt bulb across a 9 volt battery, one way of doing it is to connect it in series with a resistor. So it's some of the battery voltage, so you want 6 volts to be dropped across here, and 3 will be across the bulb, which is what it should be running at. So, you got three bulbs in a row. Yeah, that's a good point too. Yes, you can do that. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. It's fun watching the one Do you know where you do that? Where you put multiple bulbs in a row? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, there you go. You could put three. Good point. And now the voltages all add up. You've got three across this one, three across that, three across that. So if you had a meter here with one lead there and you touch it on there, you'd measure three. On there, you'd measure six, and then nine across the whole lot. Now, um, one place you do that is in Christmas tree lights, where uh, you have, um, sorry about the noise coming from the rural fire people next door. <laughs> yeah, you say you have a 240, 230 volts, which is what comes out of the power socket, and then you have a whole row of bulbs, and what you do is if, you, if they're um, 3 volt bulbs, you want to have 230 volts divided across them all, so it's easy, you just divide 230 divided by 3, 76.6. Yeah, 76. <laughs> just 70, 70, 77 light bulbs. <laughs> now, the, the voltage of those bulbs is normally around about 12 volts, so that, what's that? that's about um, um, maybe a bit more, maybe about 24 volts, which is about, okay. about, about 10. Yeah. So typically it might have about 10 volts. Okay. No thanks, Joshua. Wait, so what was that? Yeah. What was the answer to that one that was about? So you get the idea, you can, you can, that's cool putting them in series, like a daisy chain. The only problem is if one bulb blows, they'll all go, there's no current that can get around the whole lot. In, in a house lighting, what we'd actually do is we connect them all in parallel. We've got the 230 volt supply to the house, through power, you know, through the power pole or under the ground, through some fuses and a meter and a circuit breaker or two, and, and the odd switch. But if essentially what they do, all the bulbs themselves are designed to run off 230 volts. If you look at them, they've got that written on the end. There's all the bulbs. They're all wired in parallel. So they've all got 230 volts across them, and the current's flowing through, and all add up to the total amount that you take off the main supply and you get charged for. Right. Do it. Let's do a maths one here. Um, where are we? A 6 ohm resistor is connected in parallel with a 30 ohm resistor. So it's a parallel. We'll do the parallel ones because they're, they're the hardest, aren't they? So a 6 ohm resistor is connected in series. Josh, could you just make sure that, that record light's on a little picture screen? Make sure, make sure we're actually... So we've got a 6 ohm and a 30 ohm resistor in parallel. Yep. There's so we need to work out what the... Record red. That, that's cool. Thanks for, thanks for that. So 1 over... Uh, total is equal to 1 over R1, okay, so 1 over R total is equal to 1 over 30 plus 1 over 6. We could probably do the lowest common, do not, um, yeah, 1 over 30 plus um, 5, five, um, five over 30, yeah. 1 over RT is equal to 1, is equal to 6 over 30, isn't it? Yes. So R total is equal to 30 over 6, which is equal to 30 divided by 6 is 5, isn't it? And they got the answer. Yeah, fortunately, <coughs> A is one of the answers. It's always a worry if you get the uh, you get an answer that um, that isn't in the list. If that's the case, you know you've done something wrong, you go back and recheck. Um, 
What we can just quickly do is just run it through the calculator. Do you want to just divide 30 into 1? 1 divided by 30, we'll just do it the other way. Rather than doing it with fractions, is equal to 0 0.03 recurring. Two decimal places is normally enough for this sort of thing. And 1 6 is equal to, it will be 1.166, I think it is. 0.166. So if you add 0.1, just add the answer to that, plus 0.033 equals 0.1, equals 0.2, isn't it? Now, um, 1 over RT total equals 0.2. So the answer is uh, 0.2 divided into 1. Tip it up the other way. Um, so 1 divided by 0.2 is 5, isn't it? You can just work it out. 1 divided, just clear it down. 1 divided by 0.2, 5 ohms. So that's... So you have to go from that, that stage to the answer. What you have to do is divide that, that into 1. So 1 divided by 0.2, and you can do it on the calculator using the 1 over x button. Or if you, let's call the reciprocal. When you divide a, a number into 1, let's call it reciprocal. Uh, if you divide it back into 1 again, you'll get back to where you started from. Right. So that's just a the time. We'll just, just pick one other. It's quite nice to do a few out of the actual exam. Do one more. You getting the hang of it? Yeah. <laughs> one more, okay. Uh, here's a good one. If 10 resistors of equal value, this, this can highlight something which I forgot to mention before actually. 